one of my friends knew that some company was looking for someone to make their flyers and also to maintain their website. And because I had some previous experience with Photoshop, I got the job. And besides flyers, like a big part of my job there was to replace advertisements to a platform because they would, they would time out after four weeks. And this was very boring. I mean, it took me like multiple hours to replace all the advertisements. Um, so I ended up writing a PHP script for that, uh, which automated the task. And that's also where I learned to program in general. And like seeing how to code, I also learned how to break it and like what could go wrong when you are writing a program. And, and then I, through Googling and also because of interest in the general security field, I got to HackerOne. And I, I think that like the coding experience I previously had really helped me to have some beginning on HackerOne uh, that, that like helped me. And, and from there, I mainly learned just by watching YouTube videos from, for example, previous conferences like DEF CON, but also by reading people's blog posts. Most of all, I think it is curiosity because when I was starting out in the security field or like with bug bounty hunting, I didn't properly know the difference between XSS and CSRF. So I was like playing around, but it was quite hard just because I like didn't fully understand it. And I, I think to stay motivated and do well in the, in the security era, you really have to figure out what those vulnerabilities mean and, and how you can find them. And that is where often like time just comes in, like you have to read a lot on it. And, and from there, basically you'll, you'll get better. And, but then the, that time is justified, of course, also by the rewards you're getting from the bug bounty program. Contrary, I also like CTFs, which can also be seen as a puzzle where like bug bounty hunting is also a very technical puzzle, so to say. And there you, you don't get a monetary reward, but you also make progress by like going through all the levels. And, and that is also very rewarding and fun to do. And, and I think that is my biggest motivator, like curiosity and, and feedback. So the most common vulnerability type is XSS. Um, it, it can be quite impactful, but it, it still often requires user interaction, which is also why as a bug bounty hunter, if you really want to go after the high stuff, you look for more server side vulnerabilities as well. But um, yes, XSS is definitely the most common uh, vulnerability, I think. 90% of the websites out there that have some user input have been vulnerable to XSS at least once. It's, it's very hard to do consistently right, even though frameworks are out there that will mitigate it by default. It's just really easy to have like a single misconfiguration which will like blow it entirely up. So the golden rule here is to always sanitize your user input, but often that gets taken in the context of, for example, escape single quotes and double quotes. But for example, you could go even further by just cleaning your data input to the minimalistic level, like to as minimalistically as possible. So for example, an email address should never contain double or single quotes. So why even allow them to be sent to your server? Because having limitations, for example, of what you can input or in an application will also by default also uh, like minimize the attack space that an, that an attacker has. And that, that is just a very good principle in general. The, the second thing I would recommend is trying to stay into touch with 
common vulnerabilities. I mean, you don't have to be an expert on them, but at least know how they can be exploited so you know what to protect against. So uh, a good example would be know that for XSS, you will have to do different filtering if the input lands in an HTML tag than if it ends between script tags because the context differs there, so the filtering will also have to differ. So recently I got a payout by Zomato, which is a food delivery company, and they have a special sign-up form for the restaurants because they allow them ex uh, extra access, like for example, the ability to edit the information of their own restaurant on their platform. And the way they verify you are actually the owner of the restaurant is by calling a number that they know you own. Uh, and the thing was, if you start this procedure and then look in the JavaScript code, you could see the final endpoint that will process, uh, process your application. So if you started the request, they would call you, but you as an attacker don't own the phone number, so you would never get it. But if you just like skip that part and immediately go to the success endpoint, send the correct parameters that were given in the JavaScript files, it would still think you had the call and would give the restaurant to you, which allowed you to see, for example, some of their bookings, but also be able to edit their information. And that, that was for me a very interesting bug because it is it requires some human intelligence to, to exploit because you, you really have to know the flow of the application and the logic behind it uh, because you first had to start a procedure and then submit the call.